everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Summer. We are breaking down the different ways that you can layer hair today and why one way might work better for you than the other. It's perfect for if you are cutting your hair on your own at home or new in salon. And before we get started, I wanna remind you all, be sure to check out my second channel, Summer Beauty. If you enjoy hair tips past cutting tutorials, like how to get volume in your hair, how to get your hair healthy, you will find all that good stuff over there and more. So be sure to check it out. If you only enjoy my tutorials, no problem. I'm happy to have you here, so let's get started. Okay, so we are going to get started. A couple weeks ago, I did a tutorial where I had asked you guys if you wanted to see a breakdown video on the difference between the types of layers you can do as far as stationary guide and traveling guide. So that's what we're doing today. This mannequin was originally a lob bob sort of haircut with a side swept bang. So I've just put her back to the middle um, because one side I'm gonna be doing one way and the other, the other side so that way you guys can see a visualization. So I'm gonna first let you see what it looks like. She's pretty, not much movement going on. It's a really soft look. Throughout the back there's really not much movement either so that way you'll be able to see. So we're gonna get a nice good before here and then this side she naturally was a little bit more thin and cut into so that way you can see the difference of the before and after. Now that you guys have seen the before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just spritz her down. I'm gonna do this wet and then I will reshape at the end. Okay, so we're just gonna come and split it right down the middle. And we're gonna just clip this out of the way. So this is clipped off and then we're gonna start on this other side. So what I'm gonna start with first is we're gonna be doing a traveling guide first, which you guys have seen me cut in a traveling guide the most. So what a traveling guide is, is you're gonna be creating your layers and you work all the way around the head. You're constantly rounding, you're gonna get a lot of uniformity with your layers. Um, we're a stationary guide, I'll touch on that. So I'm gonna create these pretty short at first just so you can visually see the difference. But what we're gonna do is you would come in, we're gonna take our section and we're coming straight out from the head and I'm just gonna cut it fairly short. And then I'm rounding it all the way up like I would with any regular layer. So now what you're gonna do to create that going, you're gonna take a little bit from your first original guide and add to it. So now your guide has, sh has shifted. You're not coming back to where you started, you're rounding with the head. little damp. So we have our first guide here that we've cut. And then we've come in, taken a little bit from that original guide in our next section. What you wanna try to do with your traveling guide is to keep your sections as close in size as possible to keep it nice and even as you move through the head. Um, if you take too big of a section than too small of a section, it just creates a little bit different of a look. It's not necessarily that it'll be une uneven, but it's just better to keep them the same size. And then as I move, I'll push this hair forward. So I've got my next section here and I'm gonna come back to our old guide and we're just gonna keep rounding with the whole entire head. So when you're doing a traveling guide, like I said before, you're gonna have all those layers and movement distributed more evenly throughout the hair, whole head. Not hair, well, whole hair, whole head. Um, you're gonna take out more weight everywhere too. So 
If you are somebody with really, really thin, fine hair, um, you might want to do a stationary guide, which we'll be talking about in just a little bit, or you can kind of do a modified version. You can have a traveling guide, but then also where you over direct. There's a lot of different ways you can do layers. So if this is a series you guys would like me to start where I break down the difference where you guys can see one side of the head, one way, the other side, the other way for visualization, let me know in the comments. Um, but a traveling guide though is great for if you want to see ample movement and ample layers or just like more of an even flow throughout the whole head. So typically when I do do a traveling guide, when I get to my sides, I will still maintain a traveling guide but I often will over direct it back just so I maintain a little bit more weight and thickness, especially in this region in the ear and sides is where people tend to get a little bit thinner. So instead of coming straight out how we've been, you can over direct the hair lightly back. That way you're just extending just a little bit. You get your perimeter to fall and you'll just maintain just a little bit more movement or you'll maintain more thickness. You'll still have movement, but more thickness. And again, I'm coming in, I'm taking just a little part of my new section. I'm combing that hair forward to get it out of the way. And I'm taking from my old guide. And we're cutting. So again, I'm just very, very slightly angling back. Your perimeter falls there and we cut. And a guide too can be done. I mean, I'm doing these um, vertical, but you can do them horizontal as well. That's all personal preference. That would be another topic, the difference between vertical and horizontal layers um, that I could work on as well. I feel like I'm getting a little confusing here but there's multiple ways that you can do your layers. So we have a lot more shape through here. I know it's wet, I am gonna dry it later, but we've got your shortest pieces are up in here. So that created movement all the way around. So if you come to our front piece here in our back layer, they meet up pretty perfectly. So there's evenness all the way around. So I want you to remember how these layers basically are meeting up. I mean, this is a little bit longer just because we were coming forward and lightly over directing back. But when I over direct that back, we were meeting this back layer here, so it still blends and flows, but you have layers all throughout the whole head. And then I'm just gonna lightly, lightly finish off her very front, and then we'll move into the other side to show you guys the stationary guide. And then I'm just gonna lightly face frame. I mean, I'm not trying to create it like beautiful in the front. This is more so for visu visualization. So I'm just gonna lightly, lightly face frame. And then all I did with that face frame was just connect it to where you have your shorter layer underneath. So I'm gonna come back now to my middle guide here or part and I'm just gonna clip this out of the way now. I don't need it. So again, this left side of the head we did as our traveling guide. So you're gonna see a lot more movement. And then on this right side now, we're gonna create our stationary guide. Okay, so now we're gonna be starting our stationary guide. So we're still gonna be getting some shape and movement through here, but it's gonna be 
much less. So a stationary guide, you bring everything back to the same original guide. So you can do that where like in my butterfly, my original butterfly haircut, I brought everything forward. So the pieces around the face were a little bit shorter, but more weight was maintained in the back where this haircut, we're gonna start with our layers in the back. So you're gonna have more weight that is maintained in the front, which is ideal for like a lot of finer thin haired clients that maybe they want more shape throughout the back because like me, I've got a lot of hair in the back of my head but along my face, I don't, where I typically don't love having a ton of layers. So what we're gonna do is take our first section here and we're gonna set it. Again, this is just for visual looks. I wouldn't necessarily do this in real life. I'm trying to do it short enough where you guys can see the difference. So we're gonna come out. I will just go ahead and let that perimeter fall and cut. And then I'm gonna take my next section, still taking a similar size section as you would for if you were doing a traveling guide. And instead of rounding here now, we're gonna bring everything back to this original guide. So as you move forward on the head, you're gonna be over directing the hair back to your original guide. And as you round towards the front, you are gonna eventually run out of hair just because it won't be able to meet the length. But what this is gonna do, because all of this hair is going back, you're maintaining that thickness here. You're gonna almost start to form like a slight angle naturally that happens because you're maintaining all that weight. And then a stationary guide, depending on the amount of natural thickness that somebody has, you can take it in one big section if you wanted to. That's for like the very, very fine, very, very thin hair types. I wouldn't suggest doing that for somebody with super thick hair. So still work in those sections though. I'm doing that just so you guys can really see. I comb this forward out of the way and all of this hair is coming back. So now you're gonna start to see there's less hair for me to cut. I just have a little bit on the top. I didn't go up quite as high with my layers. I might at the end, we'll see. So again, I want you guys to watch here. All of this, I'm pulling straight back, fine side of my comb to get nice tension. And we're coming back to this original center parting guide. Center parting for the back. the bottom we kind of have nothing left to cut it's just at this very very top and then this whole front section probably we won't even touch it Okay, so as you can see, we've got all this hair right here, feels thicker than the other side. So when I go to let that down, 
you really don't have near the movement that you did on the other side. Like look how much longer this layer is versus when I pull from the same section up here, look at the difference. You have much more length here because you directed it back. Where this traveling guide, I'm turning it this way. So we have our stationary guide here and then the traveling guide is here because as we rounded, we kept that shortness going all the way around where the stationary guide, you're gonna have more length maintained here in your front, but as you pull to the back, it gets shorter. Well, I'm just gonna lightly blend in what kind of doesn't need to be blended in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna blow dry her so you can see it shaped with more movement to get a little bit better of an idea what it looks like dry with our shorter traveling layers versus the stationary layers that keep a little bit more length going towards the front and thickness. So let me do that and then we will come right back. Okay, we have her dried and styled and now we get to see the difference visually between the stationary guide versus traveling guide. So even from the front, you can actually see a difference already without even seeing the sides. Over here on our right side, we have the stationary guide. Again, this was bringing everything back towards the same point. I left her split in the back so that way you guys can see, but we brought everything back to this same point, moving throughout the front, over directing back, because again, a stationary guide is gonna maintain that thickness and length from wherever you're over directing. So what it naturally does too is sort of create a light little angle moving forward. If you take our shorter piece back here to our layers in the front, you can see that natural angle coming in. And again, that's because the weight is being directed all to this front piece because of that stationary guide. You still have some nice movement throughout there, which is great, especially if you are somebody who likes to keep the thickness and fullness along their face. Maybe you're like me with naturally thinner sides where you don't want to cut into as much. A stationary guide is still gonna give you some movement, but maybe not quite as much taken out versus your traveling guide, but it just swoops back nicely. You get nice shape. You still have plenty of options if you wanna curl it and whatnot. And then we'll come over here to the traveling guide. It's a totally different ball game. A lot more movement and shape. Those layers are all throughout the head everywhere and they're uniform and much more even all through the head. When you take your shorter, your top layer in the front section and compare it to the back, again, I lightly over directed this. These come and meet up much better. There's much more evenness. You get an even flow all throughout the entire head of hair. So ideal for somebody who likes a lot of movement, they want all that weight removed. Um, and you can still do this on finer hair types. You don't have to go as short as I did for the visual purpose. But if you like more of that flow everywhere, a traveling guide is gonna be your best bet. And then I wanna show you too, the difference especially for the thickness you maintain with a stationary guide. If I come in here and I take my first layer with the traveling guide, it's a little softer throughout the ends. Hopefully you guys can see this. Where when I take my stationary guide, it remains a little bit thicker. I don't know if this is showing up on camera. Let me take a different piece, okay. So we're gonna take one piece here from our stationary guide that came all the way back versus a piece from our traveling guide. Hopefully this is showing up visually. They're kind of short, but this maintains a lot more thickness from our stationary guide, where our traveling guide has less length for one and it's a little softer on the ends and that's because you're moving with the head. With the stationary guide, you're pulling everything back. You're almost creating like a blunt cut in and of itself. You can soften it obviously, but even if you're softening it, you're still gonna maintain more thickness. So this was fun to show you guys a comparison. I mean, the stationary guide still creates a ton of movement and shape, but if you want even more, 
the traveling guide is the way to go. All right, there we have the difference between a traveling guide versus a stationary guide. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and learned something. You can't go wrong really with either way to cut your layers. It just comes down to personal preference. So if you like more movement and more layers with a uniform look, then go with that traveling guide. And if you like a little bit more fuller option, less shape, and you wanna maintain that thickness, especially in your front, then go with a stationary guide. Be sure to check out my new channel, Summer Beauty. Otherwise, I will see you here at Styles by Summer on the next video.